Good morning. It's June 18th, 2021. I'm Kimberly Jolly from Fat Quarter Shop and I have lots of fun stuff for you today. We're going to be finishing our very last socialites blog today, but don't worry. We're still going to talk about the different tips on putting your quilt together and we will talk about some tips for backing. So that's going to be amazing also, but today is our last blog. Our next one will be in 2022. After I show you this block, I'm going to do a demo on triangles on a roll and give you some tips on how to work with them if you've got like a lot of really big pieces, how to keep your triangles on a roll flat. We're going to show you the brand new Kaleidoscope book and I'm going to kind of tease our sew along. Then I'm going to go through all the sew alongs that I work, at, work on at home and sh the very first week we'll be talking about the sampler spree sew along, so that's exciting. And then I'm also going to talk about two different YouTube channels I was featured on, which is super exciting. And then of course, I'll show you new stuff at the shop. So I'm very excited. I'm gonna kind of jump right into Socialites 36. The, the block is designed by Corey Yoder and it's called Kindness. So I'm gonna show you her block. She did a three inch block and that looks like um, Spring Brook, except on the outside that is a Bella solid. So that's a really nice way to get depth of the block. And we will be showing also all of our sample makers quilts once they're finished. These are my blocks that I made right here. And this is from the on, the on the Farm White on White, which we should be getting later next month. And then this is the Homestead Collection. And this is by April Rosenthal. So what we're gonna be doing with this is we're gonna piece the, 12, the nine inch blocks into a quilt and we're gonna auction it. We're gonna also piece the six inch quilt into a quilt and auction it and all the proceeds are gonna go directly to Make-A-Wish. And then I, you know, I, of course I love really small things. So I'm going to piece this one and I'll keep this one for me just so that I have one. So that in a couple of years, if we ever want to show on live stream our first social lights, at least we have one of them. So that's super exciting. Um, this block is made up. This will be corner squares. This will be flying geese paper, or you can do it, at, you know, just flying geese. And this will be a four patch. Now I am going to show you a little trick that I do with four patches and it's a trick that you can actually use on a lot of the blocks in the sampler spree that I'm going to be showing you later today. Now it is a technique that I do make mistakes on which in next week's block I'm going to show you this huge mistake I made. I saved it just to show you but um, I it's a technique that I use all the time. It's a little bit complicated and some people might hate it. We are going to have a special giveaway. You can enter to win a $500, $200, or $50 gift certificate from Fat Quarter Shop when you share a photo of your completed Socialites quilt on Instagram. So you need to use the hashtag SocialitesQAL and tag us, which is Fat Quarter Shop. Post your photo by Friday, July 16th, and we will announce winners on July 19th. So that's super exciting so make sure you enter because a lot of you have already um, completed your top i'm going to jump right in and just show you how to make this block so this week i decided that we're going to make the six inch block and the reason i decided that is i wanted to demo our flying geese paper and we don't have the smallest size for the three inch and I'm gonna use these two fabrics, which are Lori Holt fabrics, and the six inch fabric, the six inch block will fit in her red sampler sew along. So I might just save it for that in case I need an extra block, or I might put it on the back. But I thought, well, I've already got it, let's do that. So I'm going to show you um, how to cut the block first. And the first thing I do is I look at C and D, and it says these are, if I'm gonna do the six inch block, this needs to be one and a half inch squares. But we only, I'm gonna do these four squares. So C, you need eight, but I'm gonna do two of them different. And before I cut the whole block, I'm gonna actually just demo this little thing right here to show you what I do. And 
It's a bit complicated, which is why I'm going to show you first instead of cutting the whole block, just to kind of hope we can grasp the concept. So we need, for this is one and a half inch square, one and a half inch square, and a one and a half inch square, and a one and a half inch square. So one and a half plus one and a half is three inches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut one and three quarters. So I'm going to do one and three quarters by a th little bit over three, three inches. And the salvage is on the left. I've got my fabrics right sides together. And I'm going to put this right in my sewing machine with a quarter inch foot. So instead of cutting two red squares and two white squares, I've made this strip longer than needed and a quarter inch wider. So, and I'm not going to trim it down to one and three quarters because I'm going to show you, I'm just going to trim all this salvage off. And I literally run this through my machine as fast as possible. And I do this on um, a lot of the sampler spree blocks. So that's why I thought it would be great to show today. Then I'm going to kind of show you how I get that into a four patch. And doing this will waste a little bit, a little bit of fabric, not too much. But you're going to, if you can get the technique down, you'll love it. So I'm going to set my seam, press to one side, and I set my seam just to um, get it nice and flat. Now here, I'm going to press open. And I'm going to let that sit. The one thing that I did find is this week, for some reason, I was having to press open on the front just to make sure it was really nice and flat. So from here, if you cut this one and a half and you used a quarter inch seam, that should be one and a quarter. So one and a half minus a quarter inch is one and a quarter. So I'm going to put my one and a quarter inch line here and trim. And then this should be two and a half. And I know because it says right here, two and a half, because I'm on the middle one. So two and a half. Now I'm going to sub cut these into two one and a half inch strips. To do that, first I will line up one of these lines on my center seat, center crease, turn it around, and those should be one and a half. So one and a half plus one and a half is three. And then you rotate and sew those together. And then that will come out exactly two and a half because you trimmed down. So that's kind of a long way about of doing it, but you're going to get really nice results. And when you see my blocks from Sampler Spree, you'll kind of see the results of it. The only downside I would say is it's easy to make a mistake while you're doing it. So um, that would be my, you know, there's always a positive and a negative to everything. So I will sew this together. In a little bit but I'm just gonna leave it pinned together and I just make sure that when I've got this pinned my white and my red touch my white and my red exactly and you can kind of see it is touching so those are my C's and D's so I'll put that on my design board this design board is a little bit let's see there we go Oh, it says a word, Abe. Okay, so now I'm going to move on to the flying geese. So you can do the flying geese where you cut your fabric B rectangles and your fabric E squares to go on the corners. But instead of doing that, I'm going to use this flying geese paper. So if you are doing the three inch size, we don't have triangle paper that's that size. So you would have to do it the traditional way or you could make it bigger with this and then trim it down. If you're gonna make the six inch block, you're gonna use ISE 774. And if you're gonna make the nine inch block, 
you can use ISC 775. And this is just a way to get your flying geese to be nice and perfect, and I'm gonna demo it. And it's something that you should try, and you might like it, you might not. So um, just try it out and see what you think. I love it, I've loved my results. And you'll be able to see in some of my blocks coming up the results I'm able to get. So I need to make four of these. Each page has two, two flying geese, so I need two pages. And if you look at, it's gonna tell me what to cut. So instead of following this cutting, I'm gonna follow this. So for placement one, which would be my background, I need one three and a quarter by four inch rectangle. And what's great about this is you can kind of chop stuff off. It doesn't have to be exact. So actually, I'm gonna just do this. I'm just gonna cut three and a quarter. And I don't have to trim the left side because I'm using foundation paper. You're gonna trim it down later. So you don't have to do that clean edge cut, if that makes sense. So then I'm gonna do a four. And I'm doing it twice because I'm making four instead of two. So that's my background. And then for my ease, it, I need two two and a half inch squares cut on the diagonal. So I'm actually gonna do four two and a half inch squares. So I'll actually just cut off some two and a half right here and they don't have to be exact. So I'll just cut like a little bit faster than normal just because it doesn't have to be exact. So like I won't take the time to line up my ruler so much. And then you cut these on the diagonal once. So we've got these three and then I just need one more. So I'll just cut it from down here. And then I'm just gonna stack them up a little bit, chop them on the side. And then I'll put these together on my design board and then we'll come back and assemble those. So that is my B and E, but I will need some other E's here. So let's see, so I've cut part of my C's, so I've cut two of my C's, I've cut all of my D's, I've cut eight of my E's. So I still need to cut eight more C's, which are just squares. So I would just cut those and I just look, it's easy to see on our patterns because I've got my C's here and my C's here. So I need to cut eight more of these. And then for, I've already cut my B's and I need to cut my A's. So sometimes I do do things a little bit complicated, but in the end, this goes so much faster than for me. So for my background, I'm gonna kind of finish cutting those. So we're gonna zoom out a little bit. And then someone says, wouldn't you get the same results making strip sets and cutting them down? Yes, which is what I was doing. It's just a strip set. That strip set was smaller than normal so so this is four and a half and then i'm just going to sub cut this down american gatherings fat quarter bundle is sold out will it more be coming in no they will not we sold out of all of them i would check primitive gatherings to see if they have any but i did actually check last night and they are sold out at moda and because the yardage came in in february a lot of the SKUs are already sold out so i'm unable to make more is there going to be a patriotic box? There will be a patriotic box. It will launch after July 4th because we have delays that are out of our control. So these are our A's. So I'll put them on my design board and label them. Our B's we need for two and a half. So here I'm just gonna do two and a half. We'll see how many we get across. I love the flying geese paper, thank you. 
I love it too. I love anything that's going to make my results better. I will say I'm really um, very happy with my sampler spree blocks because the accuracy came out really nice and it's always nice when um, stuff comes out nice. So here I'm just cutting the bees. And when I cut, I just make sure that this and this is lined up. Now I get the sticky notes. Honestly, a helpful hint. I've made mistakes doing the wrong instructions. Yes, I actually made a mistake the other day making one of Lori Holt's red sampler blocks. I made the whole block the wrong size. So even though on here I show you all my tricks, sometimes at home I even forget my tricks. Okay, so from here, see, I need eight. Let's see. I need eight one and a half inch squares. So let's see. Okay, I'm gonna cut a four and a half inch square first and then subcut. And I think I'll need a little bit more fabric, but I've got some on the side. Enjoyed seeing Kimberly yesterday on Lisa Bonjean's live stream. Yay, I'm so glad you found me there. It was fun. Are these the new pins? Are you liking them? Okay, so those are not the new pins on the set, but I'm gonna add them so that we have them next week. But I tried them and I love them. And I'm gonna talk more about the pins in a little bit. So here, this is when I would use a rotating mat. So I can get one and a half, one and a half, one and a half. So I can get three by three. So, because I cut it four and a half. So, and I need, let's see. I need eight, so this is gonna give me nine. So I will have one extra. And then here you can either rotate or just move it. It's small, so I usually just move it. And then when I'm picking up my ruler, if you do this, it doesn't move your fabric or lift up, just don't go left to right if you go up and down. So there you go. So those are my C's, I have one extra. I'll just save it for my scrap day and later. And then for my E's, I still need eight one and a half inch squares. So I'm gonna do the same thing here, except yeah, I just, I'm gonna start with a four and a half inch square, the same thing I just did. I guess I could have cut those at the same time, couldn't I have? I guess if I wasn't talking, I would have known that. Okay, so four and a half, four and a half. And then I'll subcut that the same way I just did. Triangles on a roll give me more confidence in making, making smaller blocks. Yay, that's what they're supposed to do. Will you have any more of the red bundles for Lori's red sampler? Okay, we will, but it's gonna be September. So a lot of Lori's, all of Lori's fabric that's in reprint is all coming in in September. So if you're waiting on any kind of bundle or anything, it'll all come in the same shipment or in September. Can I substitute two fat eights and still do the American Gatherings? You could, but you would need more than just two extra. If you did two fat eight bundles, yes, that will, that will work. That will definitely work. Yay, so that took a long time to cut, but that's okay. Now we're going to kind of at this point, I kind of call it, um, not chain piecing, but more like trying to do like a assembly line. That's the word. I'm like, there's an assembly line. So we've got this ready. Now, if I was at home, I would just do everything all at one time. So I would do my flying geese at one time, my, my four patch at one time, all of my other pieces at one time. But here, I think it's gonna get too confusing. So what I'm gonna do here is just, we're, we're gonna finish this one by just doing a quarter inch seam. And then here, we're gonna just do this all at one time. 
What I like to do with this before I work is I've got these lined up exactly. I'm gonna crease on all of these diagonal lines because this really helps me. And if you do, you can do up to five pages at one time. So turn it over and you can see your solid lines and your dotted line through the back. I'm gonna put a little blue and put my background fabric right side up, just making sure it's within the dotted lines. And you can see those lines on the back and they're in place. So hopefully it won't move. And then from here, I'm going to crease all of these and trim them with my add a quarter ruler all the way around and then I'll ask questions as we go. Let's see, I sprayed one side of my Alpha Bitties with basting spray and now they don't slide off my fabric. That's a good idea. Is the Bats and Boos SAL Scott Quarter friendly? So we are um, not announcing the pre-cut yet, but we are still going to be doing that. It's just gonna be when the fabric arrives. Instead of guessing when the fabric's gonna arrive, we're just gonna wait till it actually arrives, which is different than what we normally do but I think that um, that will work better for us. Um, do we have an ETA on seamstress pre-cuts by a laundry basket? They usually come a month after. We can add that to our list to come back. We can email them today and get an update, but they do make those in America, so it takes about, it arrives four to six weeks after the yardage. Thank you for introducing me to Juki. I got mine a couple of weeks ago and I love it, yay! So from here, you'll just go in order of number. So we'll do the twos first. It really doesn't matter, but these are the twos. So put a little glue and just position it. I'm gonna do one side and then we'll do the other side. And this is where I'll use like a little open toe foot so that I can see my stitches. When will Bats and Boo's quilt kit ship? Okay, I just, um, that, it's just gonna be when it is. It's, um, I'm, I don't wanna guess because every time we guess, we just have to move the date more and more. And to me, that's um, annoying to customers, so I don't wanna do that. So I've switched to an open toe foot here and I'm gonna flip it over and stitch. Now I want to start stitching before this, I don't want to start there, I want to start out here so that my stitches don't rip out. And I am going to lower my stitch length by about one knob. And then I stitched slightly past that solid line, not all the way out, but just slightly past. Now I can actually flip this over, add the second piece, and since I'm right here, I don't need to glue it. I just want to flip it over and do the same thing. And then do the same thing on the other one. At home, do you cut out all of your pieces for your entire quilt at one time? No, usually don't. I usually start with one block, get the feel of what I want to do, and then usually I'm doing samplers or stuff that um, has a lot of cutting, so I usually do a little bit at a time. It kind of depends. Whatever um, I can sew that day is what I'm gonna cut. And so from here, we're gonna press this way. And in fact, I'm not even gonna get the iron out. I'm just gonna use the quick press seam roller because it's easier, plus it doesn't involve steam. So I'll just finger press. Thank you for sharing your knowledge, thank you. Can you show us your blocks from the Riley Blake? Yes. I'm gonna show you this week's block. This, um, I'll show you next week all of them, but this week I'm just showing them this week's. Does the quilt have to be quilted and bound for the giveaway? No, it can be just the top. It can be either or. Cat is amazing in customer service. Thank you, we will tell her. Do you start your fabric for the back of the quilts? I prefer to. If I don't have time, I don't, but I do prefer to. 
from here, I'm just going to clip these little wings off. And since I've already cut that in my previous step, it makes it super easy. Have you figured out what to do instead of the applique and the chicken salad quilt? Yes, but we're not, um, it's uh, actually Lori figured it out, but we're just, she's not, we're not announcing it yet. And I'm going to let her announce it, but I know you'll like it. I can say that. And then a huge thank you to Valeria Bauer who um, gave us a super chat. That's awesome. Thank you so much. And make sure to send in your questions, any kind of questions you have about any of this little piecing. So from here, I'll put this on here. I'll probably glue the first side. That's usually what I do at home. Kind of, and I, I kind of try to do the glue where it's not in the seam, because sometimes I do too much glue. And then I'll just add the second ones. Am I still participating in Quilter's Trek? No, I have no idea what Quilter's Trek is, so I have no idea what that is. Now here, when I'm doing this one, I will again, start outside the solid line and go past it. Oh, look what I just did. Okay, this is crazy. Look what I just did. I wasn't paying attention. And I didn't put my red fabric there, but I stitched my line. So I basically stitched air because I was not paying attention. I was reading y'all's questions. So I'm gonna unstitch that and then re restitch it. Why don't laundry basket fabrics come in mini charm packs? So um, we purchase what is offered. And so that's just not something that Andover offers. Um, so you would have to, you know, you could email them and suggest it, but it's, um, it's up to them to what they want to offer. Okay. So my stitch length is super tight, so it's going to be hard to pull this out. Um, so what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to kind of do this little thing. I'm going to rip this way. I cannot believe I did that. I'm so embarrassed. So let's see. And that's going to start ripping the paper, but that's okay. And this would be your disadvantage for using a really small stitch length. But see, at some point, oh, you just pull that off. Now that messed up my paper, but it's okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you how to fix it. But this is the stuff I do at home. I mean, everybody makes mistakes like this. Okay, it didn't pull the stitches out though. So just pull the stitches. Any news on kitty corn kits? Okay, that fabric should be coming in a couple of weeks, but nothing is shipped. I mean, the yardage is not here yet. I do have something exciting that um, I, sh I had someone sew for me for live stream. And it's actually, um, my kids are gonna love it. So I can't wait until I can show it on live stream so I can take it home because one of my kids is gonna love the quilt. I know they're gonna fight over it. Um, but it uses one of our free patterns and the half yard bundle. So I'm always trying to think of how to use like our existing videos with new stuff to like freshen them up. But you're going to, I think you'll really like it. Gina, Gina has it right now. My quilter has it. So here I just pulled my thread off the back. So now this is like this. Um, I'm just gonna leave it like that. It's not gonna fall apart, it's gonna stay. So I'm just gonna put my, now I'm gonna put my fabric there and then stitch it. And then thank you to Laura Davis. Thank you for all you do, thank you. I'm so glad that y'all didn't tune out right after I just made that mistake. Kudos to Deborah who helped me choose the fabric line. Yay, she was super helpful, thank you. Kimberly, thank you for all you taught me the last 36 weeks. This is the first quilt. I've learned so much and I'm grateful. I always hear your voice when I'm cutting and piecing. Thank you. And we're super excited because right now we're kind of in the, we're in the, I don't wanna say planning phases, but we are in the planning phases of Socialites too. And it's going to be amazing. The fabric we picked is amazing. Um, and 
I think that you guys are going to really like it. But we're going to do the same thing where we give you lots of options. Now here, you're not supposed to use steam. But I'm just going to because I just, I don't know. I'm just going to. I usually don't at home, but I'm just going to leave it on. I love that you share, including those occasional boo-boos. Well, I wasn't trying to share my boo-boo. But that's okay. I think it's funny. At home, I probably would have just started all over instead of picking that out. Now this is where I do have a trick that I'm gonna show you later in the show that I came up with this weekend. Okay, now right here, look, that is a little too thick. That's a little bit too much. That's way more than a quarter inch. So my fabric must have shif shifted. So I'm going to try to move this so you can see, and I'm gonna actually trim this because that is just too big. That's gonna to be too bulky. That's just gonna to be too much bulk back there, so I'm gonna trim that off just because I noticed that. Can you show my dinosaur blocks? Yes, I haven't sewn on it yet, again, but I will. I have a lot of stuff planned for the summer with my kids, um, so I'm gonna have a little bit less time, but that's okay. Now I'm gonna let those sit with the little clapper on them. Okay, so then we're gonna move to, we'll come back and trim that. We're gonna do these. We're gonna make four of these that are like this. So we get our A. Now this is why we have developed these patterns. I don't wanna read any of that. I don't wanna read any of that. I don't wanna read any of that. And I don't wanna read any of that. I wanna read this and this and how many to make, that's it. So that is why everything is very detailed because when I'm at home, I don't wanna read all that, but some of you do, some of you are visual, some of you are like to read, so we have it both ways. So I'm going to put my A's right here. Now what we could do here is, one thing I've been doing with this, I've been doing this. When I've been doing um, corner squares, I've been using this glue at home and I'm gonna show you kind of what I've been doing and I did it with all my sampler blocks. So on the back, I am gonna draw my lines. Now at home, I don't draw my lines, but on the sampler blocks I did because I wanted to be a little bit more accurate. So I'll show you how this works and you can try it and see if you like it. It's kind of fun to change up your techniques every now and then. So this is kind of what I did all last weekend. Good morning from Pennsylvania. Enjoying this so in, so along, learning so much. Thank you. The first time I've ever made a sampler quilt, my quilting skill has increased from participating in socialites. Thank you for your tutorials. Thank you. And I will still do tutorials. I mean, I'll come up with something each week to show you. And what I like about showing you this stuff is I just want to show you kind of what I do and then you decide what works best for you. Not, um, you know, it's like if we're going to retreat, you can do it however you want. You don't have to do it just because somebody else is doing it that way. Now, this is what saved me time on the sampler spree, doing this. Now, visually, I've got it right here. So I know that this needs to go this way. Three, four. So first thing I've been doing is just laying them out and making sure I've got it the right way. And then... Because it's a corner square and you're gonna chop it off, I use three dots. I don't put it up here because I don't want it in the seam. And I don't put it down here because I don't want it in that seam. I put it here. One, two, three. Because in the end, that's all gonna come off when you trim it. And I'm gonna let that sit there. And I'm gonna do all of these. And then when you go to the machine, you're ready to go and it's gonna avoid me making a mistake, turning my square the wrong direction. And I've been using this glue where, in spots where, you, where you're going to completely cut it off. And it dries pretty quick and it's not, it doesn't dry, um, even if some of it accidentally stays on there, it doesn't dry um, like in a big old lump, which is what I would have expected it to do. And it keeps it really nice. So when I pick it up to go from here to my sewing machine, it's not gonna shift which is really nice. So I kind of wish, to be honest, I had this um, product a long time ago. But I have, I'm, I'm not using it on everything though, I just wanna be clear. I've just been using it on corner squares, so 
if it's worth it to you for that, I mean, it does add an expense to your project. I just, I don't know, it's something, it's kind of cool. It's like being in kindergarten and putting your shapes in the little spot, like, you know, the little puzzle. That's kind of what it is. My glue, what glue am I using? Okay, I am, let's see what it's called, Acorn Precision Piecing Products Seam Aligned Glue. Now, I do know that they have um, had some shortages on their product, so some of their products are not in stock, but I have a ton on order. Especially anytime I'm gonna use something, I make sure we have a ton so that I can always get some. Because if I show you guys, then you'll buy it all, and then I don't have any. I love how you write your patterns. Thank you. That is a big shout out to my team. That is Sarah, Jocelyn, Nova, Crystal, Angel, Cheryl. They do all of that. Did I miss anybody? I don't think I missed anybody. I think I got everybody. And then, okay, so this, I used to be worried when I started that when I did that and let's see the glue kind of came off. It's not sticky. It just goes like that. It just go whoop and it's gone. Like I don't even have to wash my hands. So, and then here I just put this back on and you can tell I've used this one a lot because there's like some glue gunk. Um, you just, you can wipe it off with alcohol. Let me see. And you'll have to ignore that sound up there. We have somebody on top of the roof that's walking right over my head. So, I um, wonder what's going on outside. Okay, so now we're going to go back to the machine, but because I'm no longer using the foundation paper, I'll turn my dial to the left, which makes it a little bit bigger, seam allowance, and see it's not going to fall. And I'm just going to do these really fast. And you can chain piece them or you can just start and stop. I'm just going to start and stop. do try to sew directly on that line. I don't sew to the, some people will sew slightly to the right, but I don't do that. I thought that was my sewing machine. Okay, two more. And then before I leave this machine, while I'm here, I'm gonna switch out my open toe foot. It's technically not called an open toe foot. That's just what I call it. Put on a quarter inch foot and run my four patch through there. And just remove my pin right before I sew over it. And then here, we're gonna trim the little corner squares. Good morning, I'm late. Wanted to thank you for the series. I've refreshed my skills and learned so much and I found that starching is a game changer. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Yes, I have found that the starch I've been using, I feel like it's just not strong enough. So I'm gonna try, I have, I'm gonna try a couple of different things. I'm excited about making a snowflake day. Yay, I love that one. I love that it's simple. It only uses four fabrics and it uses um, the square and a square paper, which is, something that I has really been helping me. Let's see. Will the Jolly July project be layer cake friendly? Jolly July is cross stitch. But any of the upcoming sew alongs, we're not going to say the the pre-cut yet because we um we don't want to give it away yet. Could you show projects from a past Ruby Star on a future Friday? So if we do a kit or something, we show it. And we have a lot of people who work here who do modern. And so if they have something that they've made, then we do. Will all the videos still be available? Yes. Unless YouTube goes away and then they won't. So here I'm just going to press to one side and then I'll come back and press open. And these I will all press to one side and then come back and press open. I love the mid-step measurements. I appreciate your patterns. Thank you. I'm doing the dinosaur quilt due in November. I'm going to starch and take a deep breath. Yes, I think on that one, what's great to do on that one is um, just cut, 
take a break, come back in peace. But just do one, like do um, one dinosaur type at a time. Don't cut the whole quilt because that would be crazy. Why do I put the red piece on and then sew them on the paper side? That's just the way, that's just kind of how paper piecing is done. And um, it's the only way you'll be able to sew on a line that you can see the exact measurement, I guess. Are there instructions for borders on this quilt? Does this quilt have borders? Um, I don't, there, we have free instructions. Um, let me look at the book real quick. I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, yeah, there are, okay, I'll show you how to cut the borders next week. That'll be, so for next week, I'm gonna give you some tips on triangle paper and I can give you tips on the border cutting. And here I'm just going really slow so that I get everything nice and flat. This is why I like Kimberly, you don't hide your errors. Well, it's kind of hard to hide when, okay, now see, this is where the glue stuck. I got a little too close. It just comes right open. I, li I don't know, I'm kind of silly. I like to laugh at things a lot. Sometimes I laugh at things a little too much and my daughter's like, can you be serious? I'm like, um, maybe not. <laughs> I don't know how you sew and talk at the same time, so a mistake is to be expected. Well, that happens too at home when I'm watching true crime. If I get really into something, I'm like, oh, I just totally lose track of what I'm doing. I just finished my blocks from the most recent pattern that looks like a checkerboard going to piece the top. It was so easy. I loved it. Thank you. Oh, I'm going to burn myself. I received Table Tastic 2 and can't wait to make more. Yay. We did extend that coupon code. So if you missed out on getting the book, the coupon code, which is Table Tastic 2, is still it's we're gonna run it a couple more days okay so now got that and that and then we're gonna trim these down and then we can start piecing our block i think so from here what's great about these is you don't have to think you just have to cut on this solid line so i just cut And I just keep going and just cut very carefully on the line now on this you cannot do pressed open and I think that's okay for a couple of blocks and not have everything pressed open and then from here I usually do one side and then I rotate and do the other side. And then we'll do this second one. Are all the signed ones gone? Yes, those are all gone. But his next book, we'll do signed copies on his next one. We're actually talking to him about doing something. I can't tell you what it is yet, though. Sometimes I say too much and then, then I can't take it back. So when you look at the front, this is why you can't do this as a square in a square because you've got this in here. So that's why you have to have the other paper for that. And I actually just ran out of my two inch finished square in a square paper this, this weekend, so I have to buy some more. And then to pull the paper off, um, I just call my son. I say, Peyton! And he comes running. I'm not kidding. He really does. He likes to pull the paper off. And he'll say, how many? He's a little bit like me. And then he counts. Then he runs off. And then I call him back. Oh, we've got some super chats. Janet Buster, thank you for your time and content. Thank you so much for that generous donation. Cheryl also gave us a Cheryl Squires. Pace Anderson, thank you for all you do and your customer service rocks. Thank you. We try. Um, that is what we built this business on. We do make mistakes from time to time, but we always try to do our best. Thank you for the super chat, Melinda Thomas. Some of this is kind of sticking today. Uh, FQS is awesome. Thank you for your videos. I'm addicted. Thank you, Jody Murphy. 
And the thinner your stitch length, the more it's gonna come off. And sometimes, I will admit, sometimes I've been putting too much glue and then I have blue on the back. So I actually might be able to find one of those in uh, some of the Susan Aki blocks to show you, but I just said, I'll forget it, who cares? So now I'm gonna kinda lay everything out and kinda have a mess. We'll lay everything out and decide how we're gonna do it. So, this is where I just kind of start laying it out. So, I, at this point, when you start doing rows together like this, I kinda stop paying attention to the pattern and go straight here. That's just what I do, but, um, and so I'm just gonna kinda lay out everything the way I think it is and then I'll double check myself. And then when you look at the front, this should be super flat. It should be really nice and flat. So that's the outside of the block. Oh, these, I didn't need to cut these. I shouldn't have cut those. Those were from my flying geese. I cut those extra. It's like, wait a minute, I don't need those. And then let's see, one, two, three, four. So I'm going to, let's see. Kind of assembly line this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew down this, stop, add this. Then I'm gonna add, I'm gonna sew these together and these together so that I get a lot of piecing done at the same time and just go to and from my board. And I'll probably just, well, I can just pin these before I go to the machine, I guess. You are so awesome. I love the tutorials and I always learn something. I've enjoyed 36 weeks and I'm sad it's over. Thank you. Well, we're still gonna have the backing. We're still gonna have the finishing. We'll still have stuff. What are the name of the felt boards you're using? Okay, these are called design boards. They are made by Lori Holt and they're sold by Fat Quarter Shop. But you can also make them with supplies from your craft store and we have a video on our channel on how to do that. And you can just search Fat Quarter Shop Design Board. So I'll go from here to here. Now this, I forgot, this needs to meet in the center right here. That little point needs to meet there. So let me try to pin that. I forgot to pin that. It probably would have worked out anyway. Okay, my machine just unthreaded. How do you decide what order to do the blocks for social lights? How did you decide? Um, we just kind of did it based on, we kind of moved the designers around so they could be featured at different times. And, um, kind of a little bit correlates to the layout in the quilt. But yeah, it's not, um, there is a reason behind it. I just don't know exactly. It's been like a year since we designed it. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back to piecing. Let me pull that out. I'll go back to the board. Now I've got a bunch of thread going everywhere now because of that cut, so I'm gonna need to trim that off. I don't like these little threads. Okay, so here we're gonna see if it, um, I'm not gonna iron, I'm just gonna look to see if that matched, and it did. And then this time I'm just gonna add as I go, I'm gonna just add. I love using the design boards for the layout. Yes, me too. They really help. It's kind of a game changer. Will there be a Friday live? Yes. Even though Socialites is ending, I'm still going to do a live stream every Friday. I still have tons of content. 
In between Socialites and Serendipity, I'm making the French Vanilla from Perfect Ten. I love it. Thank you. That's a cute quilt. I've been quilting for 30 years and you've taught this old dog new tricks. I like this glue idea. Yes. I had to watch the videos that she made to learn how to use it. I joined late. What retreat are you talking about? Okay. We'll talk about it when we talk about... I'm Okay, so go to Lisa Bonjean's YouTube from yesterday. It's called Stitch with Lisa Bonjean and you can watch that. And it's in there. I need to make a baby quilt. Don't know gender. Can you recommend a fabric line and a pattern? So I think our Fat Quarter Baby quilt book is really cool. Um, as far as a baby line, let me think. Um, oh, Effie's, Effie's, it's called Effie something, E-F-F-I-E. -F Effie's Woods, that one would be really good for either gender. I don't think it's out yet, but that one would be great. Okay, my thread keeps breaking. So, I think I need to oil this machine, maybe. I'm not sure why it keeps breaking. Uh, yeah, so let's see. So let me know if there's any other questions. Let's see, and I'm just going to fix this. Uh, Susie Clary says, thank you for being you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm not sure why the thread on this is breaking, because it doesn't break when we do our other videos, like our normal videos, so... I'm not sure. Okay, so then now we're gonna just press and I'll kind of just lay everything. And then I will just press. Um, Judy says, I used to use lids or paper plates for design boards. Once I learned how to make them, I can't sew without them. Oh my gosh, that's funny. Paper plates. That's funny. I don't know what I used to use. I don't think I used to use anything. Cece says, what size needle is better for piecing, 80 or 90? Um, I usually use 80, but the lady who developed the glue recommended 90, so I have that on my list to try out later. Um, but I, for years, have used 80. I'm looking forward to the 2021 Mystery Quilt Along with Strawberry and Rhubarb. Thank you for bringing forward such great projects. Thank you. So here I'm just pressing to whatever side is easiest, and then I'm going to go back and press open. This iron today is super hot, and so I'm going to let it cool before I keep ironing and just kind of put my little clapper. Let's see, and again, this is the Block 36 designed by Corey Yoder. This one's, a, it's not hard, it's just a lot of pieces, but the techniques are not hard. Now the pinning of the next part might be a little hard, but that's okay. It's already been an hour. Oh my gosh, sorry, I'm taking forever. Last week's block only took 30 minutes. But like I said, I'm going to save this one and put it in something, some kind of, I'm going to put it in the Lori Holt red quilt block, pro, quilt, red quilt probably. And remember, we're having a giveaway. So if you put the hashtag SocialitesQAL and tag FQS, um, you can enter to win three gift certificates. So, and we're doing that on Instagram. And then our next, we'll do another contest that's not just Instagram, but this one, we decided just to do Instagram. Do, do, do. Okay. Now I'm usually gonna turn this sideways and then just try to press, this, this iron is just so hot right now that I'm afraid I'm gonna burn myself. And we didn't do anything different, it's just some days it gets hotter. Let's see. And a huge thank you to all our designers who have been um, designing all these free blocks for you guys. It's 
great if you put all of these in a binder and then just keep them and you know in a couple of years maybe you're doing a quilt and you need a six maybe a designer has a six inch block and they're designing you don't like it well you can come and get this free one and we're going to keep the blocks the same size for socialites too Okay, so this kind of flipped up a little bit and that flipped, so. I'm trying not to burn myself. Let's see. Okay. So from here, I'm gonna pin these together and I'm gonna clip in between the, um, where those little chain pieces are I'm gonna keep keep clip those apart because um, since we're pressing open, you don't need them. Well, the longer the show, the better. Oh, thank you. Uh, I think your equipment doesn't want the sew along to finish. I think this. I think it's just telling me I need to do something with it, but I'm not great at. Um, figuring that out. Okay, so then I'm gonna do that and put that on the other side and we'll do both of these at the same time. And then next week, um, we're gonna do finishing. So I'm gonna talk about um, half square triangles. Well, you can actually use the tip that I'm gonna show you today for next week. And I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna show you how I chain piece blocks using a design board. So. Um, I especially love the binder that went along, helps it keep organized. Yes, and I have used that binder for so many things. And then we'll use it again in the future because we'll have socialized too. So you can just put like a little um, file folder in between or divider in between. And then you can have part one, part two. Okay, so here I am looking to see if these two meet up, and they do, and that. Now this one, you can see right here, I've got about a sixteenth of an inch too much right here. I could leave it or take it out, but I'm gonna just leave it. Because you can't really tell. Um, what colors of Aurifil do I use the most? That's a great question. So I am, I like color 2000. I buy it by the cone, and I use about two cones a year. With the American Quilters Sew Along, I'm using color 2600. Now, Lisa Bonjean is using different colors, so you can check out her thread choices on the video she released yesterday, because she talks about the, her thread selection. And she talks a lot about how she doesn't like to see the thread on the front, which is also, I agree with that, which is why, like when you're looking at your project, when you pull these two, it's really hot, but when you do that, you should not see your thread. You should not see white. Okay, now that is a little bit messed up, but I'm gonna leave it because it doesn't matter. On a previous mention, you mentioned trying Little House. Have you tried them? Yes, and I'm gonna talk about them in a little bit, but I love them. But there is, um, I'll talk about them more later so I don't forget all my points. I love your pin holder, where can I buy it? Okay, so we're sold out of it, but we are currently working on developing an even cuter one. It won't be super soon though. Then, since I've already sewn these, all I have to do is sew these. Now, here is where it's gonna get tricky. So, let's see. So this little quarter inch right there needs to meet that point. This quarter inch needs to meet that point. So this is where I'm gonna cheat. I'm gonna draw a quarter inch line at where that intersects on all four of these. And I'm gonna show you one little thing that I just noticed. 
So first I'm gonna do that, but when I was doing this one right here, that, can we zoom in? Let me see if I put it on the blue, if you can see it better. Okay, so right there, I can see that that red goes over that much. I'm gonna take it off. And then here, I'm gonna, I'm going to mark, I actually don't need to mark these because these are points. Yeah, I don't have to mark those. So I'm going to put these right sides together. And have you ever had it where you're like adding something to the side of your block and it's like totally the wrong size because you cut it wrong? Wouldn't that be so embarrassing if I would have done that? That'd be horrible. So first pin left and right. And then, um, I've got my line. I want to put that line, the intersection of the black line between the white and the red needs to hit that point. So you could put your pin in and then put your pin in here. And then once your pin is straight up and down, then remove it and put it back. Now this is not 100% foolproof but I think you'll get a good result. Do you use steam? Yes, I do, because I pre-starch. And because I pre-starch, it already shrinks my fabric. So you're gonna see right here, it's wavy. See how it's kind of wavy? It's not wavy there, that means this is a little bit bigger. It's okay, it's gonna come out. It's like magic, right? Okay, so this is where it gets wavy. You can kind of see the wave. Take your finger right here and pull it. Whoop, there goes the wave, it's gone. And it matches. That one's a tiny bit off actually. I'm gonna fix it. That one's actually off, I didn't pin it, I did it by eye. So that's why it's off, I'm gonna fix it. I'm so happy today is the last day of school for my kids, so now I can watch. Oh my gosh, my kids have been out of school for like three weeks. They're driving me crazy. But our neighbor, oh my gosh, they're so nice. They just moved in, like, well, I guess it's been six months now. So they're always on their, um, they're always on the, they're always on the, the trampoline, even my daughter, all the time. And, um, they bought them this thing that goes around the top and it sprays water. And so now they're on the trampoline more. And I would think that it would annoy the neighbors that my kids are on the trampoline all the time because they're loud, but they love it. So I'm so excited about that. One of Emma's friends came over and they, they want to go to the pool. And I was like, well, I mean, I guess you can go to the pool. We don't have one at home, but we have one in the neighborhood. I was like, I guess I could drive you. And then they just went outside and got on that instead. And I was like, well, you just saved me a car ride. I mean, I guess they could walk, but it is about a mile and a half. Okay, so this time I'm going to actually pin it. I love this square. Thank you. Serenity. Okay, I'm actually going to do that, and then I'm going to do this one at the same time to save time. I leave my pin until I pin on the left and right, then I remove the center. I love that trick. Yay. What do you have on the portable iron surface? We just put some random white fabric. It's just random white fabric that we just put on there. And we just um, taped it on the back with, I don't even know, just tape. Does the scrapbook of quilts give you pattern instructions? Yes, it does. And we're gonna have a pillow along and the details, I'm gonna give you the, some of the details in a little bit. And I, there's gonna be six pillows total and I have made one and a half. So I'm trying to make um, okay, this looks funny. Something's wrong here because when I do that and I turn it over, that's too far. That little point is too off. So something's not right there. So I'm gonna check my seam. I'm gonna check my seam and my line.
Yeah, that's right. Okay, let me try it again. For the contest, do I have to use the layout? No, you can you do your own thing. And we're actually gonna show you, right when I finish the block, I'm gonna have some setting ideas for you. And you can set it any way you want. Um, we're not too strict on that. Like, have fun. We always want you to do whatever you think is gonna look the best on your quilt. Don't We don't ever want you to feel boxed in. This is just a free program and we're just happy that you guys are sewing along. And we love when people come up with different ideas. Okay, let's see. And then that's also got a wave, so we'll try to pull that too. So now that I get over that first thing, I'm gonna pull a little bit. Oh, I forgot to do the other side. That's funny. Forgot. Okay. So I'm going to iron this and then we'll add this and I'm going to throw in some questions. I've got a couple of questions to answer. It always makes it easier the more questions I have. Let's see, is there an update on the low volume club? Oh my gosh, I wish there was. Um, we're still behind. Everybody, um, I'm hearing a lot of people chatter about it, but everything is out of our control. Like, who would have thought that we're still so behind? I mean, I do see a light at the end of the tunnel, but um, I don't have an update yet. And I'm in that club, so that's how I know there's not an update yet. But I'm gonna still continue the, the Moda, um, my favorite color is Moda. I just have to wait for the next bundle and then I'll show you what I make with it. So I'm gonna still finish, but it is giving me a little bit of a break. Could you have the white strip on the back and sew with the block on top? You could. You can sew with either side on the top that you want. Okay. And then here, I'm going to just press on the top also just to make sure that's nice and flat. Any suggestions on a quick and simple but elegant quilt? My sister asked me to do a quilt for her wedding in September. Oh my goodness. Okay, we're actually working on a wedding quilt right now. Um, let me think. I really like the classic and vintage videos. Um, those are simple blocks. Um, perfect 10 quilts. Those are really easy and nice. I like those. I find that if you put the wavy side down, the lower feed dogs ease it in. Okay. I usually put the skinnier side on top. Um, but yes, that's probably a great idea. Oh, and then this one. Oh my gosh. Look, I, <laughs> I drew my line over here. That's not going to help me. The line's supposed to be there. Somebody, y'all supposed to tell me. Okay, let me see, let me draw this line because I have it in the wrong spot. I received my book of scrapbook of quilts. The photography is amazing, thank you. So we did that photography. The reason the book was a little bit late, I'll tell y'all a little behind the scenes, is we had a snowstorm in Texas and we were supposed to do that photo shoot during the snowstorm. So we obviously had to cancel it, but we were dead set on that, pat on that house. So when you're renting a house, especially in Waco, because Waco is super popular now, you have to kind of wait your turn for the house. Um, and the house was really, really nice. And actually we did two houses actually. Where do you order my tops? I always look so nice. Oh, thank you. I order them from Talbot's. But if you saw me on the weekends, you would be like, who is that lady? She is a hot mess. The other day I dropped my daughter off at dance and, and um, I saw one of the moms and I was like, don't look, I haven't done my makeup or my hair. I haven't even brushed my hair. And she's like, oh, it's fine. If you see me outside of work, I do not look like this. I do it just for you guys. My kids always know if I'm doing a video because they're like, oh, she's doing a video. She's dressed up. You have converted me to, from pins to glue on the corner square. Yay, yes, that it's, it's given me really good results. 
and I did it for a couple weeks before I'm recommending it because I don't ever want to just tell you. I'm only gonna tell you the stuff that really works for me. If something doesn't work, I'm gonna be honest. How is Piggy? Oh my gosh. He's doing better finally, but he's a mess. He's taking this medicine called um, prednisone and it is making the dog nuts. So it's a steroid and he's a little dog. So it makes him nuts. He like pants like crazy. He He's just been nuts, but the last pill is Sunday. So I'm hoping that by then he'll be better. The sore on the top of his head is still a little bit there. So until that goes away, he has to wear his little cone, but he has a flower cone, so that's pretty cool. So I have it all pinned and I'm gonna sew and then sew. And then hopefully this, oh my gosh, this last block, an hour and 15 minutes. I'm so sorry, guys. So sorry. So when I said I sew with the smallest piece on top, so that's what I mean. The piece that's on the very top, whatever's the smaller one, I usually put on top. That's just what I've always done. What is the low volume club? The low volume club is a club where you get low volume fat quarters once a month except that we are like doing it. It's we're we order them from, well, let me finish this. volume club is where you get low volume fat quarters so they're just cream or white with a little bit of print on them and it's supposed to be monthly but what we do is we buy from lots of different manufacturers so we might have all but one of the fat quarters and we can't ship it out until it all comes does the strawberry shortcake quilt come with extra yardage to make some blocks the jelly bar shows two patterns, needs two jelly bars, but I think the pattern, I think the quilt comes with one. I'll get a pattern cover and then I will look at it and then tell you the correct answer. So here I'm just gonna go really slow, nice and flat. Now this one has a lot of seams, so it's, might be a little wavy. And there you can tell that I had to ease that in a little bit more than What does low volume mean? So that can be a controversial question. To me, it just means a background print with very little on it. It's um, something that came about maybe eight years ago and it kind of started in the modern, kind of, you know, the people who do modern kind of termed it. But you can see a picture that we have. You can look on our website and you'll see a picture. Okay, so this right here, this little wrinkle, it'll come out in quilting. From here, I'm going to trim this. And you're gonna see that there's a lot of pieces, so it, hopefully not too much comes up. Now see how that is popping up? I will put a clapper on it with I'll get the block really hot and put a clapper on it and when I come back later it'll be flat and I do want to show you okay this block is not six and a half I can already tell you six and three eighths okay that's crooked too so it's six and three eighths that way and six and three eighths that way it will be totally fine but because the more seams a block has if i'm not accurate the more it's going to shrink in so there's that block now we're going to clear the air we're going to clear everything off i'm going to go ahead and save the half square triangle tutorial for next week just because the block took me longer than i expected so i'm going to save that for next week and
Okay, so the the shortcut quilt does come with two trolley bars. So if you buy a kit from us, it will have enough fabric to make the whole top and binding. Can you use glues to match the seams? Yes, if you are going to press open though, it might not be the best idea because you might get glue on your iron. I haven't had any problem with the glue I'm using though. I have used the seam align for a number of years. I find it useful, thank you. Yes, we had a lot of people email in and ask me to try it. So I tried it and really found that that's the one where it really worked. When will Snowflake Day be available to order? Probably a couple weeks, um, we're waiting on the fabric. So I'm going to show you some setting ideas that we have. And um, these are different ways you can finish your top, which is what we're gonna go over next week. The first is our traditional setting that um, Jocelyn designed. And this is Quotation Fabric by Zen Chic. And um, that's our layout. The second one is Cider Collection by Basic Gray. So that's one layout. And then Figs and Shirtings, which is what I sewed some of my blocks in. That's what it would look like there. And that's our regular um, layout. Let's see. And then Folk Tail, that is a Layla Boutique fabric, and that is our setting. So you can use that, which will come out next week, or and that's also the regular. And then, okay, that's Shine On by Bonnie and Camille. And then the next one, Homestead. That's also the same one. So that's actually the layout I'm gonna use when I do mine and I'm gonna kind of have everything laid out. So when I come next week, I can show you exactly um, how I'm able to sew a quilt together super fast. And then this is a second secondary layout. This goes with the Rose and Bloom book, it's not out yet, but it is designed by Layla Boutique. So if you did a fewer number of blocks, a fewer number of socialites blocks, you could put it in her setting. And she did that coloring and Christmas morning, which is um, hasn't arrived quite yet, but it is a beautiful collection. I've made several things from it and I love it. And I'm there might be something made out of it this weekend also, because I have some leftovers. And then another design, um, this is a setting that Brigitte put together by Zen Chic, and so she will have this information on her blog. And this is um, this layout is more of a star, and you could do something really fun. You could put a big, like you could put a really, like a, let's see, you could put a really big block in that center if you wanted to. And then this is a setting that Robin Pickens is doing, and it's, uses all the blocks, it just creates more of a diamond in the center. And then Pat Sloan, this is her setting, which is, I think it's the same setting as the previous, it's just different fabric layouts and that's Morrison Park fabric. And then this um, Hildy Ebertsitter, let's see, Hildy Ebertsitter, she's, she has three and we liked all of them, so we're showing hers. So she has a heart version. And then she has a strawberry version, which I think a lot of people will do. And then she has a maple leaf, which has been super popular. I think the maple leaf was what she showed first on the social media. Um, so now I'm gonna answer questions and then I will do the tutorial for Triangles on a Roll. I'm just gonna put it with next week because too much. it took me too long to do the vlog. Kimberly, can you include in your tutorial how to calculate the size needed to make larger? Yes, so I will get the chart, print it out, and bring the chart and explain the chart and how you can use the chart, and the chart's completely free. Are any of Lori's collections going to retire? If so, I need to stock up. So her B backgrounds and her B basics should stay in print, but Autumn Love, for example, some of the SKUs were discontinued, but I wanted them, so I reprinted them from the store for me. Now that doesn't mean they're gonna be reprinted for every store, I don't know what they're gonna do, but I reprinted the minimum I needed. So after her stuff has been out about a year, it will start to go away. So that would be your, I would use a one year as a measurement. What size of block do you need to cut to make the nine and a half inch half square triangles for socialites? So I'm gonna go over that next week. I was just able to order the Honey Fabric Bundle and the Woodland Book Bundle. So excited, yay! 
Okay, so I'm gonna take like a little two minute break and I will be right back. break. Um, I am excited to show you that this book came in this week. This is Kaleidoscope. I'll put it down here and I'm going to flip through some pages just so you can see. We publish books for Lori Holt. We're super honored that we are able to do that. And Lori and I always like to add something to her books. So what we decided this time is we're going to have a sew along. It's going to combine two different sizes of blocks. And she's gonna have a demo with tips on how she pieces her blocks without paper. And I'm gonna do a demo on how I piece my blocks with paper. But we wanna save some of the details for that for a couple of weeks. So just get your book and um, we'll even be sewing with different fabric. I'll be sewing with one of her fabrics collections. She's gonna sew with a different one. So there's gonna be lots of options. Just make sure you have the book and then the setting that you put the blocks in will be free. And so it's a beautiful book, beautiful um, photography. And there is a cross stitch in here. So I'm just gonna show you kind of a couple of pages. We, um, she always does a little intro. And one thing that we do is we always put her SKUs. So if you're looking and you want to, for example, if you bought this book and you only wanted your quilt to be pink, well, there's your SKU. So we do list the SKU since it's her fabric. And then um, we also did a reference guide. So if you wanted to make your quilt exactly like we do, this block's colors are right here. So if you wanted to plan and not have to think, because that's one thing about me is I'm not great with colors. Lori is great with colors. So she's my like a color, like my color specialist. She knows how to do color. So if I bought this book, which of course I am, I, and I was gonna make the big one, I would follow this exactly so I wouldn't have to think. So we put a lot of thought and detail into it. I'll show you the back. There are also a pillow pattern. Let's see, this is the back. I can't show you any of the pages with instructions. So there's a cross stitch. And with the cross stitch, she gives you six additional colorways in addition to the two that are included, which are right here, warm and cool.
I'm just trying to show you some stuff without showing you. So there's the pillows. And what's great about Lori is she doesn't just like do one pillow. She gives you lots of pillow options. So you've got a 24 inch square, an 18 inch square, and a 12 inch square. And not only does she do that, she shows you in different colors. So if you wanna make this one, all you have to do is go here, figure out what skew it is, which is easy to do, and then you can make that. And so this is two-toned, but if you notice on the front, it's through each, these blocks have three colors. So she does a lot of stuff and puts a lot of time into her books, much more than other people do, but she really isn't gonna just throw something together and just give it to you. She's gonna put a lot of work into it. Um, and there are three sizes of the quilt and then three sizes of the pillow. And then our sew along will use two of those sizes. And all the information will be soon. And I'm gonna do mine with triangles on a roll. I do wanna show you one thing that we did do. We did include instructions on how to use triangles on a roll paper and flying geese paper. And it tells you in the book exactly what to cut if you want to use foundation paper. Now, Lori doesn't use foundation paper. So, if you don't want to use foundation paper, you're going to follow her tutorial on Lori Holt YouTube channel. If you want to try foundation paper, you can try my method. And we have included on the bottom right here. I'm not going to give you the instructions. It tells you if you want to make it my way, this is what you need. So it tells you what to buy so you don't have to think. And then it gives you the background. She did use three different backgrounds and the three different sizes. So it tells you the exact background she used and the backing and the binding because she did use the same fabric throughout in all the blocks, but the background binding and backing did change. So let me know, um, let me close this up real quick. And then I'm happy to answer any questions about the book or about the sew along. I just don't wanna give everything away quite yet um, because I wanna be able to give you a little bit. Of, I want you to wait a little bit. Let's see what size quilts are in the book. Lap, queen, and let's see. Crib, lap, and twin. I cannot talk. Crib, lap, and queen. There are, there's a cross stitch and a, three pillows. I love the reference chart and the SKU. My copy is coming Monday and I can't wait. Will When will your kit be available? It's gonna be about two weeks because we have to cut it. So one to two weeks, I would say. I can't wait to get my Kaleidoscope book. Glad it's spiral bound. Thank you. How many of the best press do I have to order if I want a whole box? I don't know the answer to that question. I would email service at backquartershop.com. I, it might be six, it might be 12. I don't know. Will you be doing a sew along using Woodland Wonderland book? Yes, but I'm not gonna host it. Pat Sloan is gonna host it and I'm gonna sew along with her. And she will have all that information on her um, YouTube channel, her blog and her Facebook group. Where do you get the alternative settings for social lights like the maple leaf? So you would just take a screen. There's no written instructions for that. Um, that's just where somebody took our pattern. So it might be pieced with the same exact thing. You just find it on Instagram and follow the layout um, digitally. I just bought Autumn Love on the flat fold table at my work. Yay. What pins do I recommend? So I have been using the little house pins and I'm gonna talk about those in a little bit. Can a jelly roll be used for these blocks? I don't think so. Maybe for the small one, let me look. For the small one, you, for the small one, you could. I'm happy you like my settings. Oh, Hildy, thank you. And you did great with spelling my name. Oh, good, thank you. Bonnie, what was the glue Kimberly was using? I'm sure you've answered, but my PC locked up. Okay, so the glue stick is just the sew line glue stick. The glue dots that I was creating is quick press seam. No, it's not. It's called Acorn Precision Piecing Easy Press. Let me grab it so I tell you wrong. It's right, I'm so sorry, I can't remember. Okay, Acorn Precision Piecing Products. 
seam aligned glue. And they have like a big bottle you can buy and refill it. So I just bought the beginner set and that's what I've been using. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about another book that just came out and it is called Scrapbook of Quilts and it is right here and we talked about it last week. The one thing I wanted to let you know is this one, we're gonna do a sew along and it's gonna be hosted by Carrie Nelson and Joanna Figueroa. I'm going to participate each week on June 22nd on the Fig Tree Quilts blog. Everything is gonna release on exactly what they're doing. And then I will each week show my pillow and they have picked six different themes and six different pillows to go with the six different blocks in the book. And you'll get to see my pillows, Carrie's pillows, Joanna's pillows, and lots of other people's pillows. So that's exciting. And then my next thing I'm gonna show you is the brand new Sampler Spree book by Susan Aki. Now this one is published by Martingale. The other two are published by my company, which is It's So Emma. And this book just came out and it has a hundred blocks and one setting. And in the book, I wanted to tell you, okay, it has cutting instructions, but it doesn't have step-by-step -step instructions. So you do have to be a little bit more advanced to be able to do this. Um, this would not be a beginner project, but she's hosting a sew along and this week's colors were blues. Now next, every Wednesday, she's gonna tell you the color that she's using that week and the block number. You obviously can do whatever you want. You don't have to follow it exactly, which I'm not gonna follow it exactly. I'm gonna follow it closely. It is intense because you have to make 10 to 12 blocks a week, but I love it and I'm making it. So I'm gonna show you her quilt that's this quilt, and then I'm gonna show you my blocks, and I'm also gonna show you some tips on what I did. Now this blog, Sew Along, is hosted on the Mode of Fabrics blog. You can purchase the book at thatquartershop.com. So I'm going to unwrap her quilt. Her quilt is pre-washed and we're gonna do it on the upper camera so that we can see in detail all of her blocks if you want to save the video and then rewatch it. So we'll start in this corner. And then I'm just gonna slowly rotate the quilt left to right and then up and down. So if you want to see in detail her quilt. So I'm gonna do the setting just like hers. This is obviously a Bella solid. I don't know the skew numbers. And the one thing that I might do different is I'm not sure I'm gonna put a cornerstone here. I think I'm gonna leave the cornerstone out. So I'm just gonna go slowly. She has used a lot of different designers' fabrics, and it's meant to be scrappy. So you can see Fig Tree, Layla Boutique, Joanna, you can see all their fabrics. So that's row one. And then we're gonna try row two. And I just wanna do this so that you can see in detail her colors, because I think that the hardest part of this quilt is picking your colors. And you're gonna probably notice some of the blocks that were made for this week. And that's a Lori fabric right there. Now, any of these blocks, if there's a block you just don't wanna do the technique, if they're six inch blocks, so you can use a free socialites block or you can use a block from a Lori Holt book. Okay, so then this is the edge of row three. So you can see she's got a lot of colors in here. She has browns, grays, blacks, reds, blues, peaches, oranges. She's got every color. And I do think this sashing right here is very nice. The color, I think the color she picked to put in the sashing really lets the blocks shine. If you put something too dark in your sashing, your eye is gonna go to the sashing rather than your blocks, and you do want your eye to go to your block. And 
and then this is row four. And each, um, each little section is made the same. So it's four blocks with cornerstones, sashing, and then the setting kind of, the sashing alternates a little bit. So she's got a Christmas tree. This block is always really hard for me. And thank you so much to Susan for letting us borrow your quilt. Um, okay, so this is the last row. And so this would be great to save this video, make it one of your favorites, like it, comment, but it makes it where if you favorite the video, you can go back and maybe in three weeks when you're struggling with the color, you can just kind of look at what she did. I love this quilt, it's so awesome. And then I'm gonna show you the back real quick. I don't think she has a label on it, but this is a 108 inch fabric made by Bonnie and Camille. I'm not sure if it's still available or if it's still in print, but that's what she has on the back. And then I'm gonna show you my blocks. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about my blocks and a little bit about a bonus that they put on the Motive Fabrics blog yesterday. So one thing that I like to do is I like to be super organized because if I'm organized, I feel like I can get things done faster. And this is really awesome because they gave these two free downloads yesterday on the Motive Fabrics blog. So you would just go to Motive Fabrics and this is where you can fill out what week you're on and what color. So week one is blue. And then you list your number of blocks. You can put either just the number or you can add the name. And then here, I put, instead of what to cut, I put my tips. And then once I'm done, I can put yes, no. And then here, as each week, it will tell me blues. And now next week is a different color and I'll fill in my numbers. And um, you can like even put a check mark when you're done or whatever, but this will help you stay organized. So my blocks, I'm gonna, I'm gonna first kind of give you an overview of some different things that I did. First, yeah, I think you could zoom in more. Um, I'm using the Stitch Collection by Lori Holt. It is not in stock yet, but it will be in stock in July. I am using her B background right here, that's 9940 pewter. And these blocks um, took me forever. The one thing that I found that was a disadvantage or a roadblock to me was I was not able to cut one block and then just pile all my design boards up, 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 up. I kind of had to do one block at a time. So that was a disadvantage. It took me a little bit longer. And I did find that I had to press everything open and use a clapper. And one of the things that I found is when I press open, my blocks are exactly six and a half. Any of these blocks are gonna come out exactly six and a half because I pressed open. So they, they did take me a long time. So I'm gonna go through each block and kind of give you little tips and things that you could think about in your sewing room. So on this one, the way I did this corner is I did strip sets. So whatever size the pattern gave me, I added a quarter inch, just made long strips, subcut, and then turned it around. This, these, I did not use our paper. I used, um, I used the quick, meth, quick method that where you cut the four fly, the four flying geese. So I used um, actually the Eleanor Burns ruler. It doesn't have the exact same size, but it um, will still do the same thing. So this is block three. It's called Susan's chain. So basically I made these bigger with the quick method that Eleanor Burns has and trimmed it down. I did fussy cut this center and I did chain piece these. So I just made a chain of all four of them, sub cut it and I did make it wider and then subcut it. So that's the front and the back. So this is block three. And thank you to Lori Holt because she picked all of these fabrics for me. So we did a FaceTime and she told me what fabrics to use because that's, I'm really bad at that. 
block, uh, this is block number 17. It's called prepa propeller. And here you can also do a strip set. You just make this one longer, this one shorter. You make it as wide as you need for four and then subcut. So I did that. And then I used H250 triangles on a roll paper here. And that made it pretty quick. And I did pay attention to the direction of the stripe. So that's block 17. Block 34 is called buoy. And this one, I didn't have any tricks to write down. This one, I just did exactly what the pattern said, except when I put this on my rectangle, I used this glue. So I did use the glue when I did the corner, corner squares and pressed open. So I didn't have anything. I'm trying to give tips, but that one was kind of basic. The next one, oh my gosh, it took me forever. It's called uh, number 42, it's building blocks. And I did chain piece this one, um, but it took forever. But I'm, I'm really happy with the results. So I did, I did that same method I did earlier. You just have to kind of write out your math and hope it comes out. Because the, the one next week, I um, made one completely wrong. It's actually kind of funny. Um, the next, so this is block 42, building blocks. This is block 55, good vibrations. So same thing here. I used the Eleanor Burns ruler, just made them bigger, and then I just trimmed them down. But Eleanor Burns doesn't make a ruler that exact size, so I just trimmed them down using traditional rulers. And I did do a strip sets here. Now it looks funny here because you see your seam over here. So it looks funny because this is so much skinnier, but it's gonna look great when it's in the block. And you can see that on this one, Lori and I added yellow. So not all of our blocks, when you see it at the end, you'll see that we did add different colors in. So that is block 55, good vibrations. This is block 68, it's called mixed nine patch. And um, this one, I think I did, yeah, I did strip sets for this and then I actually made these a little bit bigger and then just put my six and a half and trimmed it down. Um, I'm not sure I love this one, but it's done. And so you can see we added red. The next one is block 80, Rocky Road to California. And this one I did strip sets for this and then I used H200 triangle paper for these. But I'm gonna pop up a picture and show you. I wasn't sure if I should do this colorway or this colorway. So if you, we're gonna flip back and forth a couple of times and you can see the difference is that corner, is that brown. And so when you look at it here, I went ahead and went with, brown, with the blue. But I cut that extra, I took the extra time to make the extra brown, just because I wasn't sure if brown would look better or blue. And if you take a picture on your phone, it will look, then you can like swipe back and forth and compare. So I went with blue there, um, but don't be afraid to just try different colors out. And again, we've added that brown. This is block 86, double V. And I only used two fabrics here, and I used triangle paper here. This is H150, and super easy block. It just, um, it's just a lot of seams, but it's not too bad. Block 91 is Grandma Knows Best. So on this one, this is the cat's corner, or the cat's cradle, and I've shown that on one of the Socialites videos. But I make all of it bigger and trim it down to, um, to a three inch square. So uh, that came out really nice. And you can see we've, we picked a print here that will really show off a big print. So here you would wanna pick a really big print and here something small. If I put this print here, it would just be chopped up and you would just see like a lot of white. And then the last one for this week is Fancy Frame. And I did strip sets here. And then these are H100. So now I'm gonna show you all of them together. I'm gonna to kind of put them on the table so you can see them all together. And then next week I will show you all of next week's. And so just follow the Moda blog 
next week week and it'll tell she'll tell you the color to use and she'll t she'll tell you the block number and it is kind of an intense so long I think it's a lot all at once but I um, I'm gonna try to keep up And then there's two, two more. So you can see, even though it called for blue, Lori and I added in yellow, pink, red, yellow, red. So now I'm happy to answer any questions you guys have on this sew along. It's, it is a lot of fun. I just want to be totally honest and say it's a little bit hard so that um, if you're a beginner beginner, you don't overwhelm yourself. Which book of patterns should I get to use fat quarters or scraps? Fat quarter style would be great. Are these fabrics Lori's? Yes, these are Stitch, the Stitch collection. It's, arri it's arriving in July. Pressing open used to make me say, uh, but it does make me, does make three inch blocks much more accurate. Thank you for the challenge. Just curious, are there other designers who like the color purple? It's not my favorite, but I don't see purple fabric feature, purple featured in your videos very often. I don't like purple, so that's probably why, but purple isn't that popular, so, but yeah, I, I don't like purple. Um, are you using the same background for the whole quilt? Yes. Which size? is best to use for sampler spree. So I would get the small one, but I might also end up using the large one, um, but I have both. So I just use whatever um, whatever's closest. Is this the first time for you to host a quilt retreat? Yes, I'm gonna do a quilt retreat with Lisa Bonjean. She's gonna have 25 spots. We're gonna announce dates much later. I've gotta wait for my daughter's dance schedule to come out because if Kevin had to take Emma to a dance convention, I think Emma would have a heart attack and I know Kevin would be like, I'm out of here. It would drive him nuts. Like, cause Kevin is super antisocial and those moms, they're like happy hour. Like they're, they're, they're having fun. And he would be like, get me out of here. He would die. He would absolutely die. So I've got, and, and let me tell you something. I would not mess a dance convention to save my life. If she want to go to a dance convention every week, I would go, I think it's so much fun. Am I starting with the fat quarter bundle? Okay, so I got a half yard bundle from Rally Blake um, as sample yardage, but I think it'll probably only use a half yard bundle. I think I bought seven yards of the background that I said, C9940 dash pewter. Yes, 9940 dash pewter. Um, I think I bought six or seven yards. How big is the quilt? It's pretty big. Let me, let me, let me look. Eighty three by eighty three. Are the blocks six inches? Yes, every block is six inches. I love scrappy background and the low volume is great. Thank you. I want to get my scrapbook of quilt spiral bound. Is there enough margin? Yes. Just take it to Home De um Home Depot. Office Depot or an office store and they'll do it. I love the information concerning Oregon fabrics and floss for my projects that can't wait until the book arrives. Yay! So when you strip piece, do you add a quarter inch to both fabrics? Yes, I do. Sometimes I do half inch. What fabric are you using for scrapbook of quilts, pillows, and your sampler spree? Scrapbook of quilts, I will show you each week. I actually haven't sewn all of them, but each week I will do um, a post that has all the information, but I'm not gonna say it in advance because I'm kind of just pulling from my um, sewing room. I'm not exactly buying stuff, so I'm kind of throwing stuff together, so I'm not exactly sure what I'm gonna end up with. For Sampler Spree, I am using the Stitched Collection um, through the whole thing. And for the sashing, I haven't decided what fabric I'm gonna use for sashing. What pattern will be a sew along in the scrapbook of quilts? There are six different blocks featured in that book. All six will be in the sew along and you'll have some different options to pick from. It's not gonna be one quilt, it's gonna be six pillows. 
I just got the sampler spree book and fabric. Kimberly, are you doing what fabric? Okay, summer spree book. Sampler spree book, I'm using stitched. Um, I received the book, a scrapbook of quilts, and I love it. Yay! Are you doing the flea market sew along? I am going to do the flea market quilt. There are basket blocks and um, Lori and I are tag teaming and she's doing part of it and I'm doing part of it and we'll give you more information on that later. The book is going to the printer next Wednesday. So I have, let's see, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, two, five days to proof it. Final proof. Is there a slightly different color that you would suggest for the sashing instead of peach? Well, I don't know. I haven't even decided what I'm going to do. So um, I need to be much farther along in my quilt to decide a sashing. Um, so now I'm going to move to another sew along that's been a lot of fun. I would encourage you to watch yesterday's video by Lisa Bonjean. Her channel is called Stitch with Lisa Bonjean. She featured me. I was so honored that she featured me on her channel. And she has a current sew along. And I'm going to talk a little bit about it. I've talked about it each week. There's going to be 20 blocks total. So go to her channel every week and she will release on Thursdays her block instructions completely free. I'm going to make all 20. I use the American Gatherings Fat Quarter Bundle. And the setting for her quilt is in this book. So if you want to do the setting the same way, you would get the American Gatherings book. And like she talked about in yesterday's video, the sashing fabric 1040-42 or 1040-43 will be available later in the summer, but you have plenty of time because this is a four month sew along. She does have a charity that she's donating and raising money for called Hogs for Heroes. So she talks a lot about that in yesterday's video. So I would encourage you to watch it and see her passion about that. And one thing that's different between what her and I did is I'm using color 2600 Arafil and she gave three different Arafil color choices. So that was interesting. And any kind of questions you have on this one, I would direct to Lisa, but I'm sewing these. I, everyone, not everyone. I've gotten a lot of questions on how did I make this bigger and trim it down. So I just, I'm gonna talk through it instead of doing a video, cause it is her sew along and I do feel like she should, I don't wanna take the thunder away from what she's trying to do on her end. I did do this as a uh, directional print and I did pay attention to the direction. So on this, I cut all of my strips a quarter inch wider and I made them longer. So wider and longer and then as if I sewed this to this, then I would trim my white. And then I would add the red, trim the red, add the white, trim, 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 trim. But I would leave this one a little bit bigger and this one a little bit bigger and then add it, trim, and then I wouldn't trim it. Then I would make this, do the same thing. Make, I don't trim this one down until the very end. And then I trim the top three sides and then I trim off the bottom. So this will be a little bit fatter on some of them, but it gives me a, a pretty block and I haven't decided what fabric I'm going to use in my sashing. I have no idea. I actually need to text someone because I'm making it for someone and I'm gonna ask someone that's related to that person which one they think she would like better. So um, super excited. Make sure to check out Stitch with Lisa Bonjean. It's gonna be 67 by 70. It's gonna use 20 blocks so and we did donate to her Hogs for Heroes campaign. And the next sew along is Lori Holt's Red Sampler Quilt Along. So I'm gonna show you my blocks and then we're gonna show her blocks and then I'm gonna show all the blocks just because, you know, that's fun. Like, so the first thing I wanna show you is her blocks. So she posts them every Monday on her channel. This week's blocks are from the Vintage Christmas Book the Farm Girl Vintage Book, and the Great Granny Squared Book. So just kind of look at her colors, and then you can look at mine, and you'll see that mine are a little bit different, and we can just go back and forth between those a couple of times. That check that's in the very center, I ran out. She actually was so nice to send me a little bit more. I prefer to just follow her instructions and her colors, so if I have the exact fabric, so if you go back, I use this exact fabric. If I have the fabric she has, I use it. If I don't, I have to come up with my own. And then we'll show you hers individually. 
and then I can talk about each one that I did um, and kind of how I sewed mine. So this block is from the Vintage Christmas book. It's called Glimmer. You make it in the 12 inch size and like I said, I am running out of red so um, I just used whatever red I could. I do, um, I try to do lighter here, darker here, and I did pay attention to the direction of these. They're actually supposed to be this way. So that's awesome. So I did that. On this one, my tips are, let's see, my tips are, I used on this one, this paper. I used ISE 776 to make these. So that's my tip on that one. My next block is Pinwheels from Farm Girl Vintage, and this one I used the H150 paper. And this one was super quick by using the paper, and my son got to pull all the paper off. He's so awesome. Hi, Peyton. He's probably watching. And then um, this one is a six-inch block from Great Granny Squared, and this one's fun because you make it bigger and then you trim it down. So this one comes out exactly six and a half. And when you trim it down, you just put your white your white line right here on those and then this white line here you put right there and so those are my blocks it's looking really nice um, so I'm going to show you real quick the books that again so vintage Christmas and of course I publish all these books for her they're amazing a lot of you guys already have them this is one of my favorite books even though it's one of her smaller ones and I'm gonna kind of just lay out um, all my blocks I'm gonna we're gonna zoom out and we're just gonna kind of lay them I'm just gonna kind of stack them just so you can kind of see how they're looking this one is from the socialites it's her block but it's nine inches and I'm gonna put this on the back of the quilt but I'm gonna kind of just stack the six inch and the 12 inch and I feel like her blocks are much better color placement than mine are, but I do try to emulate, which means copy what she does. But she doesn't mind, because I give her credit. I like this block. So I do always wait until she posts her block to um, kind of get inspiration for her fabric. And then I, of course, paid attention to the direction of the alphabet, and she didn't at all. So that's what's great about sew alongs is that you can look what i do you can look what other people do and do whatever works best for you and different days you know you might do things different but it's looking really nice like all my reds are looking really nice i'm using her fabrics and that's why i save them this is from a much much older collection it's from a panel i think this is probably my least favorite right there and then the one I sewed today in Socialites, I can add to the stack. The Socialites I did today, I'm gonna add to the stack, I think, and we'll see how it looks. So I might switch one of these two blocks for this, which is what's great about sewing. You can switch, you can mix and match. I just don't like my fabric placement here. I haven't liked it since I did it, so I might need to just redo these two blocks. Because every time I see them, I remember. And so she's got a mix of six inch, a mix of 12 inch. This one was really fun to make. This is the one that I said, um, I wish I would have sewed the whole thing with it pressed open. And then here's my 12, more of my 12 inch. Gosh, we've done a lot in like very little time. Three a week is a great number too. It's not too many, it's not too too small. Now doing the 10 a, month, 10 a week, that's, that's gonna kill me, but I'm gonna do it anyway. And I don't know exactly how many more months or weeks there are in this, but there's my blocks. So I'm gonna leave them on the table real quick. Um, this is my little, that one that I'm gonna put on the back. So I'll leave these here in case you have any questions and then I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna answer questions, but if you wanna see any of them up close. 
What bundle would I use for the Snapshot Quilt Along Quilt? Snapshot is a very old quilt that we did as a charity quilt. I would just pick a designer that you like that has a lot of colors. Has the Strawberry and Rhubarb Mystery Quilt been shipped yet? Um, we'll follow up next week. I think design, I think block one is close to shipping if it hasn't already, but we'll put that in the follow up because I don't know the exact answer. When making the strips and trimming down, do you do it per block or sew a full length? I sew, um, so I try to figure out how much I need. So if it's a one and a half and I need four, I take one and a half times four, which is six and add half inch and I'll cut the strip six and a half inches. I'll just cut it a little bit bigger. I think you were spectacular on her show the other day. It was a great interview. Oh, thank you. Okay, so now I'm going to show you um, the Sew By Row, which is also Lori. So this just shipped if you are in the program. And this is one of her patterns that she published with Riley Blake. And she recolored it for us using B Basics. And so when you get a block of the month from us, even if it's not this block of the month, we always do these really nice sheets so that a lot of people don't sew right when they get it. I mean, I, I don't. So we'll zoom in a little bit. But it's awesome because it tells you what you need to go to. So if you accidentally mix maybe month four with month three on accident, like say it's in your, in your drawer and you kind of get it mixed up and you need to go back to it, everything is here. So I'm gonna show you the blocks that came this month and then net, I'll, I'll take them home t tonight and I will um, sew them into a row so that you can see how they look. And then, and Lori picked not only the fabric placement but where they go in the row. She picked the whole quilt design. So there's five, these are pretty easy and then these, I've already cut my sashing, so I'll put them all in a row and show you next week. And then another sew along that I'm doing is also with Riley Blake. It's called RBD Block Challenge. We're on block 15, and there's only 16 blocks, so that's super exciting because we're almost done, and then I will put it together into their finishing when they release that. Now, I am going to ask for some feedback here. This is called Summer Picnic by Christopher Thompson. Okay, so I obviously, I, this block had five colors, but I didn't want all five. So I went ahead and cut my checks. Now, I could have just made them a rectangle, and that would have been fine, but I wanted the look of the, kind of the checkerboard he was going for. So I did cut these apart into squares and sew them back together which is silly, but I think it keeps the integrity of what he was going for. I just didn't have those extra fabrics to put here because I'm using Lori's Prim Collection and I'm only using four fabrics from it. But the feedback I'm looking for is, I only put my Sashiko sh stitches as an X, and you can see it actually pretty good this week, and it's this pink thread, I think it's 24, 23 of um, 12 weight. But I kind of feel like maybe I need to go back and add some more stitches, like here, here, here. I don't know, I feel like it needs a little bit more. So if you comment tonight when I take this home, I'll look, and then if I should add some more, I'll add some more. And then next week will be the last week of the blocks, and then from there, I'll do the finishing. I haven't picked uh, my backing, or I don't think I, or maybe I have, I can't remember. Okay, so now I'm going to answer any kind of questions that you guys have, because I know that's a lot. I love the red sew along. Is it hard to do if you do not start at the same time? No, just pace yourself. Um, the Now, I will be honest, the sampler spree, that one's hard. That's going to be hard for me to keep up with. I wish I could do Lori's Red Sampler, but I only have both Farm Girl books. How many books do I need? So Vintage Christmas and Great Granny Squares are the only additional, but if you want to do it, you can take different blocks from within those books for like if she does a great granny tutorial a great granny block pick one from the book or you could pick a free block that we have through socialites 
You can make it fit your budget. You just have to get creative. When you have a pattern that calls for 12 fat quarters, but the bundle you have has 16, do you pick the 12 and add the four to your stash? It depends. I would say it kind of depends. I'd probably try to, if it was me, I would probably try to use all of them. Um, I wanted to show you this book one more time. It's called Holiday Celebrations. It's by Pat Sloan, who we love. And just a big shout out tomorrow, I'm gonna be on her channel on her YouTube channel. So follow Pat Sloan's YouTube channel. And I wanted to show you, she's doing a sew along that she's hosting on her blog. And Kate made one of the quilts in the book using Christmas morning. So I'm gonna just show it on the top. So I love the quilting and I'll tell you more about the quilting in a little bit. Gina Tell quilted this one. Kate Shaw made it, and it's Christmas Morning by Layla Boutique. And it's part of the sew-along that Pat Sloan is doing. And just ignore that knocking you hear. Everything is fine here. We're just fixing something on the roof. No big deal. No big deal. Kimberly's filming. It's okay. Let's have fun on the roof. And um, so Pat is going to release her video tomorrow. And then on the back, she put, um, let me read it. I'm gonna read the little tag. So um, the back is platinum cuddle. Her binding is grunge scarlet. And this is thatched blizzard. So that looks great. That thatch looks really good with the fabric line. And then, okay, do you think the Socialites blocks could fit into any of Lori's settings? Yes, the six inch size will. Is your Sashiko stitching done by hand or machine? Machine, I have the, I think Baby Lock has a Sashiko 2 machine now, but I have the Sashiko 1 and I'm using that. Where can we find the yardage conversion for the Riley Blake Designs block challenge? We um, have put that on social media, so you'll have to kind of search social media for that. And I've read it on the I've read it on the channel a couple of times. I think you should quilt it with the machine so it will add the stitches, or you could let me use your machine and try to do it for you. Oh, I'm not quilting that quilt with the machine. You're crazy. No way, Gina Tell. I'm sending that to you, and I there's no chance I'm gonna try to quilt that thing with that machine. You oh my god, I would probably cry, call you crying. Oh my god, Gina, I can't do it. Um, so I wanted to show you um, some different things. The first thing I wanted to talk about is to remember that Lisa Bonjean on Stitch with Lisa Bonjean yesterday featured me. So that was a super honor to even be invited. And she talks a lot about her American Gathering Sew Along and the charity she's supporting. So I, I think it would be great for you to go support her there. And I was also featured on Pat Sloan's channel, which is just Pat Sloan. And it's gonna release tomorrow morning. And so we talk a lot about it's the It's So Emma brand of our company, how we work on books, sew alongs, kind of, you know, she just asked me some questions, so pretty fun. I did want to do a couple of follow-up questions. So these are the little house pins that Carrie and Joanna love. And I tried them and I love them, but I do want to let you know, we have to get these from Japan. They take forever to come. We've sold through 65% of what we have. So if we sell out, we'll have more, but the date he quoted me last night was August 15th. Um, I did wanna let you know the serendipity behind me, the charity quilt. We have raised almost $78,000, guys. So we did it as a team. I'm so excited. Thank you so much for contributing. Next Monday, I'm gonna be demoing the very last block so join me on Monday for that. Um, a couple of questions from last week that we needed to come back to is, um, we're getting, we had a question on the Happy Days Fat Quarter Bundle by Sherry and Chelsea. That's gonna be early July. And we had a lot of questions for, sep for um, a lot of the Lori Holt fabrics. So all of her red fabrics, background fabrics, anything that we don't have, it will arrive in September. 
Um, so now we're going to move to the section called Blast from the Past. And so this is where I just find like an older quilt that I have. And this one it sits on our conference table at Fat Quarter Shop. So this was our second book that we published. And I can remember the photo shoot. Um, I love that, that photo shoot. It's called Fat Quarter Style. And the book has instructions for, let me, let me look and tell you what size. It's different sizes. So it has crib lap twin queen, but I wanted to make this using a table runner. So I made it up. I made it in 2015. This was back when I just put a little tag in the corner. So it's six years old. I actually made it at Lori Holt's house or at a hotel room with Lori, one of the two. So this is how you can get creative where you take a pattern from a book, but turn it into a different size. So this is the primrose pattern from Fat Quarter Style. Style. This was the Hazel collection by Cluck Cluck So and Wyndham. So obviously you can't get the collection anymore. Mike from mylongarm.com quilted it. And I just used, this is the white on white from her collection. And this is one of my favorite pantographs, the little floral. And you'll notice that when I show my quilts, they always have really tight quilting because I like tight quilting. Now, at the time I remember doing, when I remember doing this, and at the time it was very stylish to have the binding be white. I don't know if I like that style anymore. I probably, if I had to go back, would change that binding. And I made the backing white. Who in the world? I don't know what I was thinking. I never do a white backing. So that's pretty fun to show you a blast from the past. It's just where we're gonna take a quilt that um, I made a long time ago. We also want to show you this quilt. We Our video of the week, this week, we decided was our beginner series because a lot of people have been asking about it. And I wanted to show you this quilt. This is Brenda from Customer Service made this quilt and it's her very first quilt. She even quilted it. So huge shout out to Brenda for making her first quilt. Oh, I'm wrong one. Sorry. This is our, this is the quilt that, this one's made, but it looks washed. So I'm not sure who's, I don't think this one's mine because mine's not washed. So this one, I don't think is mine. I'm 100% sure this is not mine because it's washed and my quilts are never washed. I know. So this is the original one. And this is our beginner series. So we have a playlist for that. But then, because we featured it, Brenda made her first quilt and she used Christmas morning. No, she didn't. I'm, I'm off script. Let's see. This is so cute. So I love the binding she shows. So um, Mike from mylongarm.com quilted it. The fabric is Santa Claus Lane by Melissa Mortensen and Riley Blake. And it's her first quilt. So there's a lot you can do with that beginner quilt. The little Santa Claus is dancing. So even though we did that video originally as solids, this is a fun way to use lots of novelty prints. And then I'll also show you her backing real quick. And that's her backing, it's from the same collection. And then the next items I'm gonna show you are just new quilt kits, just so you can see them up close. And I always think it's great to show you the quilts that we do and how we quilt them, just to give you a different idea. These are, jo the first couple I'm gonna show you are Jolly Bar quilts. A Jolly Bar is a five by 10 inch rectangle. This one is strawberries and rhubarb. And the in the bar, there's always a free pattern. So the free pattern for this is called Sweetie Pie. And Angel designed it, Teresa sewed it, and Gina from Thread Graffiti quilted it. So I'm gonna show you, and I'm just gonna do tabletop going forward because I think it's easier for you guys to see. Um, and then this one, you can see this person prefers their pantographs to be super large. So I'm gonna actually compare this to my table runner just to show you the difference so that you can see that I can always tell if it's my quilt because 
I would never do a pantograph that big. I would do it this big. It's the same, I think it's the same pantograph. So you can make your quilt look totally different. Most people prefer quilting like this. I'm gonna be totally honest. Most people prefer bigger rather than. And when you send your quilt to a long armor, you can tell them if you want a big or small. So you can see this quilt is four blocks by four blocks, but it, I think, it's four blocks by four blocks. And this is the Bella Solid. So we have a quilt kit and we have the, the Jolly Bar. The next Jolly Bar we're featuring is Sophie, and that is Brenda Riddle. This quilt is called Origami, designed and made by Angel and Mike at mylongarm.com quilted it. And this one's pretty big. This is the back. So we'll start in this corner. So this is a combination of two different blocks. Well, it's actually the same block, but it gives a different effect. So if you look on this row, you're gonna see the squares right here. And when you get to the next row, you're gonna see stars. And this one also, look at the pantograph, super big. So look, now you get a star. There's a mistake in the quilt right there. There's a mistake right there. There's supposed to be a half score triangle there. Okay, we're gonna just pretend that we didn't see that. <laughs> I was like, is there a mistake? So you get this block and this block. Oh, that's so funny. Just pretend you didn't see it. It's okay, we all make mistakes, right? So really great design, love it. And that's the background, we use the background from the collection. The next group is Smoke and Rust by Layla Boutique. And this is a different, different kind of look for Layla and her next group is kind of similar. The pattern in here that's free is called Buffalo Creek. Angel made it and designed it and Mike at mylongarm.com quilted it. And sometimes the pattern calls for one Jolly Bar and sometimes it calls for two. It kind of just depends. Um, and this one, the pantograph is a little bit smaller and it's a different pantograph. And this is just this block over and over flipped. So it's like um, sometimes, sorry, that's like Santa Claus on our roof. He's trying to bring me my Christmas gift. He's like, I think you need Christmas in July. Oh, we're not in July yet, June. He's gonna bring me a Christmas present. So this one's pretty big. And then this is a little crosshatch from the group. And this one's great because we do get a lot of questions about why are there not enough manly quilts? Well, here you go. This is not only manly, it's a little bit Southwestern. So, and it's kind of got this little UT orange. And then the last Jolly Bar quilt for today is from our Jolly Bar book, and it's a kit we put together. The pattern, it's actually this quilt right here that's on the cover. So it's called Strawberry Shortcake. The fabric is strawberries and rhubarb. Angel made it, and Gina from Thread Graffiti quilted it. And I love the back. I think I might have picked it. And this one, I'm actually gonna rotate it so it looks a little bit, it's kind of like um, bricks. Very easy, very beginner friendly, and that's always great when we have beginner friendly. So I'm gonna go that way and then I'll come back around. This one's a little bit smaller, but this one would be great for if you're trying to make like a gift, a wedding gift or something small. Great size for sitting on the couch. Very easy. And so we do try to bring you a variety of patterns. 
the next couple of things that are free, this one I showed you a couple months ago. So you can see right here, you can tell whose quilt this is because that pantograph is tiny. So I love tiny pantographs. Um, I'm sure I annoy my quilters when I'm like, oh, cause it takes triple the time because it takes them longer to make it. But I really like pantographs to be large. And what's great about it is when we're here, I always know what quilt is mine because I can tell by the quilting. Um, so this is Basket of Blooms. It is a fig tree pattern and we made a quilt out of her pattern and I made it. Let me show you the back. So on the back, I took one of the Sweetwater labels that I buy. I put it on a Bella Solid. I ironed it and then I trimmed it down. I added two side borders, a top and bottom border, and then this, and then I added the top and the bottom. I actually on this one was kind of short fabric somehow. And so I actually had, I just sat and draw, drew so that I could make it work. Another new item goes with what we showed last week, which is the holiday, hol holiday essentials groups by Stacy Itsu and the Halloween has arrived. And um, I, I love this one. It's so cute. I don't even like cats and I, I like that. So that's awesome. And so all of that has arrived except one. So now I'm gonna answer questions. I wasn't so sure about Smoke and Rust when I ordered it, but I have to say it's stunning. My husband loved it. Yes, I think it's great. I love the textures the smaller pantos give to the right quilts. Thank you. Yay, mistakes, I love them. Makes the quilts personal and fun to remember. Yes, and except if it's my quilt. I don't like that so much. Um, I so much love these beginner quilts you're showing. It's so inspiring to know that they're quilts no matter the skill level and are so worth making. Thank you. If you were making a lot of Lori Holtz Farm Girl blocks, would you cut all at once or individually? I would probably do like cut four at a time and then kind of piece them as you go. This beautiful quilt made with the Christmas morning, did the pattern call for pre-cut or yardage? I'm gonna look real quick. I'm pretty sure it's yardage. Three fat quarters and then half yards and two and a half. So I would say yardage. Um, why do you put the label on the Bella Solid before you sew it in? So on the back of the label is a slightly sticky substance and I just don't want that to get on my iron. Um, and I wanted to give a huge thank you to our new YouTube members. We did do a Q&A this week on Tuesday where I just sat and answered questions. So if you are a member, make sure to go to the community tab to watch that. And our new members are Laura Flores, Lee Flowers, Jennifer Romero, Vicki Robles, and Sweet Seven. So thank you so much. And um, thank you so much for watching today. I hope all of you have a great weekend and I will see you next week on Monday for Serendipity.